Yeah, thank you, thank you everybody. So basically this talk is about uh, uh, multiprocessing, multithreading, concurrency and parallelism. So this talk is basically for uh, uh, threading and processing. So basically uh, uh, while doing a programming uh, using a threads and processing, we do mistakes, we have to use threads, we have to use processes in different different programming language, different different compilers, has different different uh, conditions to and conditions and methodologies to execute thread processes. So in this talk, I will start from basics like how to start a thread, how to process, and a basic thing. From that, we will slowly go to advanced topics and we'll cover some internal swap uh, uh, and C Python as well. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let me about tell me about or tell you about myself, bit about myself. So so basically, I started my career with uh, Arduino. Over there I was a software engineer and later on currently I am working as a senior platform software engineer at Subsense. Uh, I have experience of development of large scale, uh, scale, uh, large scale fault tolerance and mission critical systems and some ETL as well. And I'm passionate about uh, a web backend and infrastructure and I'm a Pythonist and I'm a gopher. So, so basically, uh, what is parallelism and what is concurrency? So usually people, uh, uh, I mean, usually people uh, do a mistake in these terms. So uh, many people think that parallelism and concurrency is same, but in reality, they both are different. They both are not same. So uh, basically, parallelism, pa parallelism is like to, to add more processor, uh, more, con uh, more cores, CPU cores, to to uh, 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 to make computation faster, to, it is to add workers, to add uh, uh, more cores to to your task. So suppose you are executing something, I mean executing a, some I mean, some some task or doing some computation or something, then you are adding a more cores, more processors, more workers into it to make it faster. Uh, another uh, another term, it's a concurrency. Concurrency is little bit, in, I mean, uh, related with uh, a parallelism. Concurrency is to permit a multiple task to proceed without waiting for each other. So, for an example, I have four processor, like four CPU cores or four four, four processor in uh, uh, with me. So, so how to utilize them perfectly? How to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, parallelize the task in between? It's like to to. So, for an example, I have four CPU cores and uh, I want to divide all the uh, workload with all the CPUs, so it's about concurrency. So concurrency deals with that things, okay? So, so that's a parallelism, one example. There is a eight boxes on left-hand side, and there is a two ways. So, so there are two guys, two workers, uh, whose task is to uh, uh, take one uh, box from left-hand side and put it on right-hand side. So here, two ways are there, and two workers are there. So they will do this work, I mean, uh, I mean uh, uh, one by one. I mean, uh, first of all, it will, uh, in a parallel manner. Uh, so first of all, that both guy will go uh, take that box. Uh, they will go on way one, I mean, uh, both the ways, and they will put it on right. Now, parallelism is to add one more, I mean, uh, I mean one more worker on both sides. Uh, both side. So like, I have added, two workers, so total worker is four workers, so it's a parallelism. So now, uh, uh, here in this example, uh, I have two ways, so like even though I have four workers, then also I cannot get uh, speed ups here. The reason is that there are two ways, so uh, at a time, uh, one worker will work. He can, I mean, uh, I mean, four worker cannot work at a time. So here concurrency comes in. Concurrency is like to create a more ways to execute it parallel. Yeah, so that's the term parallelism and concurrency is about. Uh, uh, another term is uh, multi-threading and multi-processing. So it's a very simple term. It's like to, to uh, 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 CPU, I mean, uh, your operating systems, uh, ability to, uh, to, parallel, uh, to, to run your uh, multiple tasks in parallel manner using a threads or processes. It's a uh, multi-threading and multi-processing. It's a very simple. Uh, term, it's it's to uh, uh, and uh, uh, threads are nothing but they are uh, part of uh, processes. Uh, uh, Somewhere we can call it uh, lightweight processes, and processes are uh, 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 it describes a, a, a program which we are executing. 
So multi-threading and multi-processing is like that. There are too many puppies and they are eating everything. They are, they are dealing with their, their own stuff. So it's a parallelism. They're parallelly acting the stuff. OK, so let's have a demo how to start a thread. In a Python, it is very easy to start a new thread. Their API is really, really easy. So basically, thread, uh, uh, threading is a module which deals with the threads in the in the Python, and thread is a basically it's a class which deals with a, a normal uh, I mean threads. So uh, first of all, let's create create one function which will do a simple, very simple stuff. It will do a print hello world. Oh sorry. So it will do very simple stuff. Now what I will do is I will creating a new thread check. So in a target, we will specify a function name. And in arguments, we will specify arguments. I'm specifying blank because there is no argument. T dot start, it will start a thread, T dot join. So it's a, uh, it's a method which, which will wait until uh, your thread execution stops. So now I'm going to run this. Oh, so, so it's thread started, it printed it. That's it. So that was a very basic example of threads. So in a Python, it's very easy. So basically, the, this is a Python threading. It's a module. It's a, a high-level module under the uh, under. I mean, it's a base module. It's a, a thread module, which we should not use it. Basically, it's a, so we should always use the threading module because the thread is inherited in a, a threading module. Uh, in Python three. Uh, thread module is renamed to underscore thread, so that's why it's like, I mean, we should not use it, I mean, uh, phenomenally. And another thing, another module uh, added into Python 3 is dummy threading module, which provides, uh, uh, so, so whenever, uh, so if there is no uh, thread, uh, I mean, underscore thread module available, then it will raise the import error. That's why in Python 3, there is a, uh, a dummy threading, uh, I mean, module, which we can use at the depth. Yeah, so basically Python uh, Python threads are system threads. So whenever we start we, have, we start a thread at the time, it will open, uh, it will request the operating system to start a thread, and operating system will manage everything. So for example, uh, I just uh, uh, called a start method, so it will call the system, I mean operating system's API to start a new thread. And uh, in a uh, Linux machine, it's a POSIX threads. So basically POSIX is nothing but uh, in older days, there was uh, uh, like uh, many. Uh, there was many hardware hardware manufacturers. They used to uh, uh, provide their own APIs and everything, and it was creating a, uh, 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 some trouble for developers because they had to write uh, uh, different different API for different different vendors. That's why one new standard defined for that, and it's a POSIX. So uh, in a, in a Python, there is a P thread library there. So it is being used by uh, I mean Python threads in a Windows. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, API is provided by uh, Windows, which is implemented in Python. And uh, yeah, all the scheduling is will be managed by operating system. Uh, so how to switch a thread, how to, uh, how to schedule it, uh, everything will be managed by operating system. Python will not deal with it. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so that's the one thing. Let's uh, execute. Uh, so uh, let me show you some another example of threads. Oh. <laughs> So basically, I'm, 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 I'm like uh, looping until uh, and it's not greater than zero. So now I will try to, and yeah. So now I will specify a target, a function name to cal. And rts to.
again and I am defining uh, another thread because I am going to start uh, two threads at a time. Okay, now I will start a thread two, uh, thread one first. So after this method, this I mean uh, it will start starting thread two. I will wait for uh, thread one to complete. Wait for thread two to complete. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Let's let's keep this for now. So so basically, it's like uh, whenever I will execute two threads at a time. For example, one method uh, is taking uh, two seconds to complete it, and uh, uh, what I'm doing is I am executing uh, two. I mean, two threads uh, using a. Uh, uh, using a, a same method, then actually uh, it should, uh, uh, I mean, uh, run in parallel mod mode. But in a Python, when we are starting more than one thread, they will not run in a parallel. So basically, uh, uh, in a uh, in a Python, parallel uh, parallel running of uh, threads is a forbidden. I mean, of a uh, number of uh, um, any number of threads you are opening, you cannot run in it. I mean, parallel. So it's a it's a, a lock at the processor level. So basically, if you have a two processor, then it will be parallel. But if you have a single processor with a multi multiple cores, then it will. Uh, I mean, uh, thre uh, then one thread will run at a time. So that's a GIL. It's a global intermediate lock. So it's a. Uh, it's a global interpreted lock. It's uh, implemented in Python. So whenever uh, one, one, uh, one thread is running, at the time it will take a lock and it will not allow any other thread to execute until that thread uh, execution complete, uh, completes. So uh, that's, uh, that's the one thing. It's a GIL. Uh, it is suitable for IO, IO bound operations. Uh, the reason is that whenever there is an IO operation or something running onto it, at the time it will release its lock and uh, it will, uh, uh, on, uh, I mean, it will give its control to another thread and that will start, I mean, that will, con uh, another thread will continue or continue the execution. So that's why it's a bit better for IO bound application because it, it also uh, releases uh, GIL, group interpreted lock on read, write, send, receive methods, uh, uh, like, uh, yeah. Uh, then it is bad for CPU bound applications because the reason is that like, uh, uh, it may possible one thread takes a too much CPU and it will never give a chance to another, uh, I, mean, uh, uh, I mean, another application. But there is a handling for uh, uh, CPU bound applications as well, but uh, although it is not suitable to QC. So basically global interpreter log is uh, uh, runs like this. It will run whenever there is IO at that time, GIL will release its log then another thread will run, and, and this is how the global interpreter works in a Python. So one more thing is that in Python, uh, so to, for, uh, uh, for a simple ca case, if there is a IO bound or something, IO application is there, at the time it will release a lot, but what for uh, 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 application or function or calculation which is taking uh, uh, too much time, it is holding a CPU, at the time, Python has uh, a handling for this kind of application. So what, what Python does is like Python Python has a tick event for in, uh, CPU for most all the threads. So what it will do every 10 ms, it will uh, uh, it will send uh, it it will okay it will what it will do it will uh, uh, I mean really unrelease uh, unrelease a lot. It will send uh, operating system uh, signal to unrelease that uh, uh, I mean a thread. And uh, uh, so, and uh, again, acquire. So, operating system will reschedule it by itself. So, so it's like to send a signal to operating system to uh, to uh, uh, release a lock of that specific thread, even though it is running. And uh, uh, so, so, so operating system will reschedule it to uh, to which thread uh, uh, you acquire or. I mean, and you can change it using SOS dot set. I mean, set interval. Thread pool, 
uh, thread pools are do whenever you want to uh, restrict a number of threads you want to open and you have too many uh, uh, i mean too many tasks to do and you don't want to open more than uh, uh, i mean more than allowed uh, uh, pros, uh, threads so at that time you can use the thread threads are nothing but it's kind of uh, a queue where uh, you are adding your task and it will assign it to uh, 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 assign it to uh, all, uh, I mean, uh, open threads. So, so basically, thread pool is like uh, when you are starting, you have to tell it that I want to start the just four CPU, and if you will, uh, uh, then then it will queue that all the uh, uh, inserted arguments and everything, and uh, it will put it uh, uh, assign them to uh, all the all the started threads. So it's like uh, pretty good, and there are some methods. So. Uh, uh, I cannot, I'm sorry, I can, because of time constraint, I cannot process demo, but it is uh, uh, similar to processes, uh, threads. It is very similar to threads. Uh, it, is a, it is a module to inter interact with the processes, to start, stop, and uh, to do uh, various operations on the processes. Uh, 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 yeah, so, so Python will create a system level processes. So whenever we'll start a process, at the time it will create a child process under a Python process. Uh, yeah, and good news is that like it, it, it will bypass a global interpreter lock which is there in a threads. So if you are starting a more than one processes, then it will, uh, that your, your calculation, your, your program will run in a parallel. In a threads, it will not happen. If you are starting a four thread, then at a time one thread will uh, run, but in a processes, it will run, uh, I mean, when it, when it, when it works on both Linux and Windows. Yeah, uh, like a thread pool, you can start a process pool as well. If you want to restrict the number of processes, like at a time that, that, that will be four processes running, then you can do it and tasks will be distributed across them. Yeah, there can be this kind of situation where, uh, as well, like uh, uh, many, many, uh, many processes can uh, interface to variables and different, different uh, memory accesses to of different processes. So how to deal with that? So it's a basically dead, deadlock kind of situation where you have a resource to more than one resources. Resources can be anything, or network resource, or files, or any kind of resource can be the, uh, can be it. So like uh, uh, thread A want to uh, want resource one, and uh, and thread B wants resource one, and they both allocated uh, uh, I mean resource uh, accordingly. Uh, also, there can be one more situation where like this can occur. It's uh, it's like uh, thread one wants uh, object one, and thread two also wants uh, object, same objects so at the time. Situation can occur. There are semaphore, semaphore for this kind of situation, and uh, it was invented by a Dutch computer scientist. Uh, semaphore can be of three types. It's a binary semaphore, counter semaphore, and mutex semaphore. Uh, in a Python, binary and mutex semaphore are same, and in a counter, it's also provided. So uh, let me show you the demo. Okay. So basically, it's a lock and uh, 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 retrant lock. So locks and retrant lock are to, to uh, if you are executing something at the time, if you want to restrict some code, that uh, if one process is executing it, then no, but no, no, I mean, no, no other process should execute it. In a parallel, at that time, uh, you can use a locks and R lock. R lock and lock is uh, different in the terms of uh, execution. So R lock can be used in a recursion. Uh, whenever you are doing uh, a recursion at that time, you should use uh, R lock because it is for that. And locks are for, uh, I mean, normal code. Yeah. So this is a code. So there is a, a, a part one and part two. Uh, I can acquire the lock and I can release the lock whenever I want. So uh, that that a uh, code which relies in between lock acquire and lock release will run. I mean, uh, so whenever that part is running, at that time no other process will run it. It will wait until that uh, that code execution stops in some process. So uh, uh, so it is for synchronization between processes. Uh, yeah. So there is a library for semaphore. Uh, semaphore is another way to uh, deal with this kind of situations. Semaphore is to, uh, so, 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 uh, 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 semaphore is we can define uh, 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 like a number, 
uh, uh, one number like uh, what are the uh, uh, maximum count like if I will define some number like nine then uh, release and acquire should be according to it so so it's like uh, if I am uh, uh, acquiring a nine locks and uh, so so uh, so whenever I will acquire a nine lock so uh, there will be a current value of semaphore it will be a zero because the reason is that you have to uh, uh, release that lock so whenever someone come uh, I mean some, some process will come to execute it at the time it have to wait until some release will uh, I mean lock release will come so it is for it, it is for uh, uh, semaphore this kind of semaphore is uh, suitable when you want to uh, have some limit some network limit or something for example you want to send uh, uh, I mean some uh, very less number of HTTP requests you want to send 10 requests at a time at the time you can set number accordingly and you you can use it okay bounded semaphore is like uh, uh, whenever we reach to zero at the time uh, instead of uh, uh, waiting for uh, waiting it will raise a value error so it is basically suited for uh, same application but it is uh, of different type yeah uh, there is one more uh, uh, thing is that uh, events so events are basically it will it will uh, uh, so basically there are many conditions occurs in programming where we want to uh, wait until some 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 condition so for an example I, I, I want to set that whenever I will get some uh, flag from network or HTTP request response then only uh, all the process should start or it should uh, start its execution or start uh, I mean it's processing until that it should pause or something so in this kind of situation what we can do is like uh, uh, I mean whenever uh, we can we can write event dot wait in uh, different different uh, where we want to wait where we want, want to stop uh, then uh, we can event dot set so whenever event is set at the time wait, wait will not work but when we will do event dot clear at that time all the wait will I mean so so whenever that program will come to that point it will wait until that uh, until we will call event dot set so it will be a blocking until we will call event dot clear a timer is also there timer is to uh, execute a function after some in interval so if you want to execute some uh, like function after I mean, seconds 30 seconds or something then we can use it that function and yeah, delay can be there. For an example, uh, I have I, I said that I want to execute this after 30 seconds, then it may possible it will execute after 31 seconds, 32 seconds. The reason is that it is using a thread internally. So because of global interpreted log or something, it may possible, I mean, delay can be there in this function, yeah, in this pipes. Pipes are basically a data channels that can be used for inter-process communication so it's a it's a uh, it's a it's a channel uh, so so it basically returns a two file descriptor uh, one for a write and one for a read so uh, whatever you write to write uh, it will be catched by kernel and you can read that using a read object uh, so basically there python provides a two two types of pipes uh, it's a os dot pipe and a multiprocessing dot pipe OS dot pipe uh, is an interface on the top of a Linux kernel. So whenever we request to open a pipe, it will open a pipe on top of. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, it will it will ask the operating system to open a new pipe, and it's a just interface to start and stop uh, uh, like pipe and to deal with it. Uh, pipe has one restriction. It's uh, uh, in a Linux. Uh, it has a 64 TB of limit. In, uh, and it uses encoding and decoding while sending and receiving a data. And uh, in a Linux, it is implemented using a uh, uh, like of POSIX, POSIX standards. In Windows, it is implemented using a create pipe method API, which is being provided. Uh, and multiprocessing dot pipe is a socket implementes uh, implementation. Sockets are files or I mean uh, memory mapped I of. Uh, of uh, in memory file sockets and it is a full duple duplex so it will it will also give you the read and write objects but uh, uh, i mean both has uh, 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 i mean on the both way you can do a communication 
uh, it's uh, it uses the pickle to send the data pickle is nothing but it's a uh, kind of comparison not not a comparison but on an on a object sending you can send object by us uh, i mean pickling your data q is also there q implementation is great set python supports uh, three kind of queue first in first out last in first out and priority queues and it is process and thread thread set Share state can be used. So if you if you uh, uh, like if you want to share some uh, variable directly in between uh, processes, then we can use a shared state. Shared state is basically uh, I mean uh, shared, shared state are to share some variable in between or or some data Python data structure in between. So uh, yeah. So so in pipes we can share some textual data or that kind of data only. Uh, it's a, it's a simple file like object. You can write anything and it will be received on the other end. But if you want to use a data structure in between interprocesses, then you can use shared memory. So yeah, it, Python provides as them as well. And they, they all the all the structures are thread and process safe. Uh, so so basically the values and arrays are multiprocess modules, I mean classes, sorry. So so you can use them. Yeah, so that's the example of shared memory uh, process value and array. So uh, it's a array is basically nothing but it's a, a, a Python array uh, implementation with a, a, some more trading and uh, I mean support for uh, multiple I mean in, interprocess sharing. And there is another thing which we can use is the manager. Manager objects uh, forks a new process whenever we start it. So manager gives a one benefit that we can use, uh, we can start, uh, we can uh, start, uh, uh, we can take a dictionary object, we can take a list object. So it's uh, very good for uh, if you want a dictionary and list, but it is slower than uh, said, said state uh, that I mentioned array and values. But yeah, we can use it and manager starts a, a new process whenever we will create object out of it. It will gives, it gives a, a, a proxy object which supports uh, 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 namespaces, dicts, locks, uh, return lock, semaphore, boundary lock, condition, event, queue, value, and array. Uh, yeah, manager can be used to share state on different computer processes as well. So for an example, I'm on computer one and I want to share uh, that data with another computer on uh, another computer's process, then I can use a manager to do it. But yeah, it can be slower than shared memory. And yeah, in the end, don't do it. Avoid side state as much as possible. The reason is that it will decrease your speed uh, in the end because uh, it's a it's a threading. Is, and I mean, they are they all are thread safe and everything. So that's why if you are writing something into it, so until you write into it, uh, it will uh, uh, block you uh, until that time. Uh, yeah. So also uh, one more thing could be taken care. Of. Whatever object we are using in. Uh, uh, I mean, multiprocessing uh, argument. Uh, I mean, that shared state. It should be pickable. It should be. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, pickable enough. In a pipes, we should also care about this thing. Whatever object we are using, it should be pickable. I mean, pickable in the sense like uh, we should be able to convert it into pickle format. Uh, zombie processes. So we should take care about zombie. Zombie processes are nothing but uh, uh, like even though my program stops, I am executing something. I have started multi processes under a, a master process. I have stopped that master process even though that child processes are running. So there are the zombie processes. So zombie processes. So so how to deal with that processes? So so whenever we stop some program, we do controversy at the time. Some signal Linux and Windows sends some specific signal to a uh, Python and we can handle that signal. And uh, we should uh, send that all the signal, handle that signal, and we should uh, terminate that processes, or we can send the same signal to that processes as well. Uh, yeah, avoid terminating processes. So instead of terminate, try to close it, or try some uh, events or something, so that, uh, uh, or conditions or something, so that what we, so that, uh, so, so terminate will uh, uh, gradually stop. It's like uh, you are, uh, uh, I mean, taking a plug of uh, your computer. So 
uh, it will give you very uh, bad results. So for an example, if you are uh, uh, writing some file or uh, I mean doing some stuff, then it may possible. Uh, I mean you will get corrupted data or something. And uh, yeah, you I mean in global variable, whenever you are using global variable, then it may possible in the child process. Uh, I mean it is possible that in the child processes you will not get the same values as you are getting in the global variables. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you very much, Hitel. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have time for questions. Sorry, there's no time for questions today, um, but just catch uh, Hitel afterwards if you have something to say, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, look forward to seeing you the rest of the week. <laughs>